What's going on, everyone? Chris from PickDogs.com here with the wraparound. We're going to be breaking down the NHL action going down on Sunday, December 3rd, 2023. Before we get into it, though, if you like this content, make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my $19 best bet and my NHL breakaway, make sure to head to PickDogs.com and click the Premium Picks tab at the top of the page. Five-game NHL card on Sunday. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get into it. Our first game on Sunday's card takes us to the XL Energy Center, where the Chicago Blackhawks pay a visit to the Minnesota Wild. And the Minnesota Wild, you know, they had that coaching change. They fired their, you know, their coach at the time, and you know, we're trying to get a, just a new voice to try to, you know, reach the players that they had because they were in the middle of a really bad slump. The defense wasn't clicking, and now all of a sudden, Minnesota, since that coaching change, we're starting to see the new coach rub pay off. They won their first two games by a combined score of nine to two. And now they get a favorable matchup against the Chicago Blackhawks team that's lost eight of their last ten games. They've lost each of their first two games on this road trip by a combined score of eight to two. And head to head with the Minnesota Wild, the Chicago Blackhawks have had next to no luck. They've lost the last nine meetings head to head, with Minnesota winning by two or more goals six of the last eight meetings. So to me, this one's this one's simple. I'm going to keep riding this hot hand until it stops paying off with the Minnesota Wild. Until the Blackhawks show me some signs of life here. So give me Minnesota on the puck line in this one. Next, we had to Madison Square Garden where the New York Rangers take on the San Jose Sharks. And it's another crazy money line price with uh, the, the San Jose Sharks on the road. Um, now, the San Jose Sharks, you know, made a lot of betters pay, myself included, by taking out the New Jersey Devils last time out on the road. They beat them by a final count of 6-3. to three as I think they had scored almost as many goals in that one game as they had on the road all season long. Um, so, I mean, I'll give the Sharks credit for that, but maybe I just, I don't want to say, no pun intended, maybe I jumped the Shark on uh, on the Devils here, on, on the Devils in that game, just thinking that maybe, you know, we can keep blindly fading the Sharks. And I think i got to realize this maybe not the case. We're going to have to pick our spots with fading the Sharks. But I think this is, this is one of those spots. You know, the, the New York Rangers, yes, they're on the second half of the back-to-back, and you know historically, you know they haven't uh, you know, haven't been uh, haven't been terrible in the second half of back to back. They haven't been great, but they are six and one in their last seven at home. They've won forty one of their last fifty one games against a team with a winning percentage below four hundred. The Rangers sixteen and five in their last twenty one overall. And never thought I'd say this about him, but Jonathan Quick has been a one of the best backups in the NHL so far this season. I think he's six zero and one to start the year. The Sharks have struggled against the Rangers in the past, losing eight of the last nine meetings, losing six of the last eight in New York. I know they don't play all that often. I think they normally play twice a year. Um, but for me, the, the San Jose Sharks, you've got one win on the road in 11, especially and on the puck line as well. The Rangers are still one of the better teams in the NHL right now. Found a way to win in Nashville. I think they get another one here. I'm going to take the Rangers on the puck line, try to get this crazy money line price down. Next, we head to the TD Garden where the Boston Bruins take on the Columbus Blue Jackets. And, you know, we, we've seen three heavy favorites so far on the card on uh, on Sunday for the NHL. And to be honest, this is the one that I ha I'm having a little bit of trouble with because there's a lot of things here that could suggest that the Columbus Blue Jackets could actually be a live dog here or at least be able to keep this one fairly close. They're 9-2 and two on the puck line on the road. I can almost guarantee they've been the underdog in almost all, if not all, of those games. And they've already beaten the Boston Bruins in Columbus this season by a final count of 5-2 to two just a few days ago, maybe less than a week ago. The thing is, though, is that the Columbus Blue Jackets, like I said, they won that game at home. And on the road, they've just not been good. They're 11-46 and 46 in their last 57 road games, the Blue Jackets are. The Boston Bruins, known for being one of the best home teams in the NHL, going back to their you know, run last year through, as they ran rough shots through the NHL. Um you know, the Boston Bruins have flat out owned the Columbus Blue Jackets in past meetings. They've won six of the last seven meetings. The thing is, three of those have gone to overtime. So I think, you know, you could definitely make the case either way here. But I still got to, I think I still got to take the Boston Bruins here on the puck line. Get some revenge after the Blue Jackets handled them in Columbus. If it was a competitive game, I, I could maybe, you know, say, hey, maybe Columbus keeps it close here. But Boston was flat out dominated in that game. They were flat out humiliated. I think they try to get some revenge at home in this one. So give me the Bruins on the puck line here. Next, we head to the Key Bank Arena where the Buffalo Sabres take on the Nashville Predators. And 
this is a game I'm, I'm not all that in love with, um, mainly because, you know, the Nashville Predators, they are coming into this game. They've had to travel on the back-to-back -back from Nashville to Buffalo for this game. And uh, they haven't played their best hockey on the road, but the, the Buffalo Sabres aren't playing good hockey either. You know, they just dropped the last couple games of their road trip uh, to Carolina and St. Louis. Now, they do go back home where they have had some success as of late, but they've only played one home game in their last eight. So maybe getting back home will be will uh, do, do the Sabres right a little bit here. Um, but that being said, these are still two teams that have been playing in high scoring games the last, you know, the last couple of weeks. Maybe it's because, you know, I, would, I shouldn't say maybe it's because a lot of the time it's because they're picking the puck up out of their own net. Buffalo just gave up six goals in each of their last two road games. And uh, in each of their last uh, three losses, they've given up a combined 20, uh, excuse me, 19 goals. They gave up six to Carolina, six to St. Louis, seven to New Jersey. And on the other side, Nashville, they just gave up 10 goals in the last two games of their homestand. So I'm going to go with the over six and a half here. I think we can at least get a 4-3 kind of game in this one. But again, this is probably one of my least favorite, not, if not my least favorite game on the board on Sunday. And our final game on Sunday's card takes us to the Crypto.com Arena, where the Los Angeles Kings host the Colorado Avalanche. Colorado Avalanche on the back-to-back -back here after falling flat against the uh, Anaheim Ducks and falling flat for the second straight game, losing in overtime or, an overtime or a shootout by a final count of 4-3. to three. And I got to say, I didn't love how the, uh, the the Avalanche finished that game. They jumped out to a 3-1 to one lead. I was on the Avalanche on the puck line in that game. That, they, they were looking really good early on. But then the tide started to turn. Uh, excuse me, Anaheim scored two in the second period, and then nothing was in, nothing scored in the third or in overtime. And you could just really see a John Gibson was kind of standing on his head, but the Avalanche just had nothing go right for him in that third period. And now they've got to pick themselves up, dust themselves off on a quick turnaround against the Los Angeles team that's playing some solid hockey at home. Now head to head, and even just in general, a lot some of, a lot of the trends are pointing saying the avalanche should win this game. We're maybe getting some value with them here, but I just, I can't get there. I mean, the, the, you know, the road teams won the last four meetings. Colorado's won 11 of the last 13 overall uh, against the Kings six known last six meetings in Los Angeles. But you know, the Kings are starting to play some solid hockey at home. They've won their last six games against teams from the central division. They've had a lot of success at home and they've, you know, they've quickly, they've actually taken over, the, uh, the role of the best team in the NHL in terms of goals per game and shots allowed per game. I think this is just going to be a tough defense for the Avs to try to break down. And uh, I think LA could potentially send the Avs to a third straight loss here. So I'm going to take the Kings minus 120 to round things out. That's it. That's all the NHL action for Sunday, December 3rd, 2023. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, make sure you have notifications turned on to get the newest and most up-to-date content here at Pick Dogs. And a reminder, if you're looking for my best bets, check out Pick Dogs Premium and make sure to let me know your NHL picks in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.